Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Plays of Binding of Isaac After Birth Plus, where we got 18 wins in a row, and we're making them forget about the last previous loss of the streak. Look, dude, PFJD3H2E, I gotta tell you, this is a, this is real gratitude hours. I don't think I have had this many great DPS starts ever on an Eden streak. Sorry, I just need to ergo myself a little bit there. In fact, I need to ergo myself once more. But, like, we have had under... Let's just call it 10 or under rate of fire for so many runs in a row. I mean, 7 is obviously, like, way better than that. But 4.90 damage on top of that is, is just amazing. But then, like, even more than that, we got meat. Which is amazing in and of itself. Because it means we know for certain that we have at least one extra HP upgrade on top of the HP that we would have started with, which must be above, you know, 0 0.5 by default. So we, we got at least the ability to take a couple of hits. We still don't want to necessarily go to the curse room unless something compelling gives us a reason to, because we might lose, a you know, our only spirit heart or, you know, who, who knows what we got going on. Did I just see a rock shimmer in here? Or am I, maybe I'm genuinely losing it. I don't know, having gotten two spirit hearts from that tinted rock, I might actually be inclined to go to the, the curse room, but... Like, this run is just insane. Right, right out of the gates, I'm like, this one has got no problems whatsoever. So how are we doing today? I'm doing well, thank you for asking. Today is a Friday. Um, it's good, good eats. Friday... I, I have a similar Friday as many people who will be watching this, you know? I, I take Saturdays off, so... Friday is my last work day. And usually, I wouldn't say I take off early. But, you know, oftentimes, this is where we'll... Sometimes we got to interface with the real world on a Monday to Friday schedule. Definitely try that. Um, it's usually where we'll, like, you know, schedule some errands or something like that. And, you know, I, I would rather be recording videos of video games than running errands. But, you know, the errands have to be run. Although, I don't know why I brought it up, because I genuinely don't have any today. <laughs> but, you know, in principle and all that. But yeah, Fridays are good. We always record a little baseball, which is nice. If you'll just give me one moment, I just want to make sure this is not a pressing message on the Discord. Just give it a moment here. No, it's everything's totally fine. All right. Again, the, the ad messages on the Discord... I know that I personally can, like, disable notifications. So I, I'm just gonna do that instead of, you know, being a jerk about it. <laughs> but what I, what I was gonna say is, if you ever at notify me on the Discord, um, and it's not for something, like, immediately urgent, uh, then I'm gonna banish you. Which is not the case, but... I don't want to be taken uh, unseriously. Like you're in a a 2,000 person Discord or something like that. You got to be very careful with like the the at everyone's, the at here's, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think we disabled those. The way I look at it is like like you. I understand by the way. You might think it's funny. Ha 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 ha. I at everyone. I've done it before. I got it out of my system though. Um, but, like, the same thing happens, like, within the YouTube and Twitch circle now and then. Like, some company will accidentally send out, like, a, an email blast that doesn't put all the emails in BCC. And instead, like, all the addresses are just in the to field. I don't think we want that. Or in the CC field, for that matter. And then there's always, like, and this happens at least two or three times a year. There's always, like... At least a dozen other YouTubers who are like, Lamau, look at this. Hey guys, they didn't, you know, hide our email addresses. Wow, Lamau forehead. And I'm always like, could you please just like stop responding to it? Like maybe this makes me a hundred years old, but like I get enough joy out of just listening to myself talk. Your your jokes are really just putting a damper on it. Plus the jokes are like the same every time. It's always like, look at this dummy, they made a mistake. And I'm like, eh, just... I I don't like people playing on my email, you know? They're, I get lots of stuff in there. Like, business stuff, but like real life stuff on occasion, we'll definitely take that as well. When I, when I log into Gmail, and it's like, 
hey, you got 75 new messages. I'm like, okay, what's going on here? And it's just 90 YouTubers who should be working, but instead are writing, uh, how dare you expose our email addresses? This is, man. you know, it's like that is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. And if, if, you, if you use it haphazardly as a joke, it might get taken away from you. That's all I'm going to say. It's like I did a, a science fair project. Or it was a module in like 8th uh, grade. And, uh, you know, there, there was a bunch of different fields you could choose from. Pneumatics, hydraulics. I don't remember any of the other ones. Um, but we ended up with, uh, with hydraulics. So we had like basically syringes and plastic tubes and stuff like that and uh you know we were trying to brainstorm a, a a way that we could make an experiment but while we were trying to brainstorm you know we're like two eighth grade boys me and my lab partner were like oh, obviously that's not going to be the secret room there um we, we were using the syringes to like squirt water at each other and then maybe like when our teacher wasn't looking squirt water at the other classmates and then she uh, eventually she noticed and she took away the equipment and was like, you get a zero in the module. And at the time, I was like, that's not fair. How was I to know that <laughs> completely goofing around when I should have been, uh, you know, at least, you, you can still have fun, but like doing a little bit of work, you know, how was I supposed to know there would be consequences to my actions? Now as an adult, I'm like, she should have followed through. Because at the end of the day, she didn't follow through. She just, uh, you know, she relented eventually, and we we got our heads screwed on straight, which maybe makes her a, a better uh, disciplinarian than me. Because it did scare the fear of God into me. No doubt about that. Um, but that's how I look at it. It's like if you put a... I, I don't know. Again, I feel like it gets unfairly maligned as a lack of sense of humor. Like, I don't know how people can sometimes hold the uh, conflicting beliefs that I'm A, funny, but also have no sense of humor. The way I look at it is, like, the at everyone is, like, when the school has a fire alarm that is pullable by anybody, you know? Like, it's part of the fire code. It's a, it's a privilege. Let's not take that. Uh, to have the fire alarm there. And the reason for the fire alarm being there is to make everybody safer in the event of a real emergency. If somebody pulls it as a joke, I mean, you're not gonna pull, you're not gonna take the fire alarm away. <laughs> but you might, you know, discipline the person involved. Just be like, hey, what are you doing? That thing's there so you don't die, idiot. You ever hear about those fire alarms that when you pull them, they uh, trap your hand there and the fire department has to release your hand? It's an example of very hostile architecture. I, you know what it is? I look at that the same way I look at the self-checkout at the grocery store. Like the self-checkout at the grocery store, they, why did they make the self-checkout machines? Oh, maybe we can save some money on staff by having, uh, you know, robots instead of human beings. Um, but then what if somebody tries to steal from the self-checkout? Well, then we'll every once in a while when something suspicious happens We'll make the machine flash a red light and then the staff has to come and punch in a code without even you know looking at your bags and uh, And then you're good to go and you're good to keep scanning But now like every time I go to the grocery store it depends on the grocery store, but a lot of the time, like if I have one item, or like under five or six items maybe, I'll go to the self-checkout. But if I got like a full cart, I would rather just go to the... Let's check. Ooh. Sure, why not? Um, I would rather just go to the actual cashier. Because I, I feel like the amount of times like I've been going through self-checkout and it's like, Error. Please wait for attendant. Error. Please wait for attendant. It's just staggering. It scales disproportionately with the number of uh, the number of items you got. So the fire alarm is the same way. We need to install the fire alarms for people's safety. Ah, uh, but people keep pulling them as a joke. What should we do? I know. <laughs> we'll make it as unsafe as possible for the person who pulls it as a punishment. You're putting the. I don't even know, it's not even cart before the horse, but like you're designing the system not to aid a human being, but rather to avoid the exploitation of the system in the first place. Is is backwards engineering. In my opinion, but you know, I'm not an engineer on that regard. We'll get out of here though. And this run is just pogging. 
I know I've railed on this at, at many different occasions, but it still rattles me. Like, I think in a perfect world, and I understand that it, you know, there's concerns about labor, you know? Like, the automation leading to people losing their jobs. So I'm not really, like, ignoring that. I'm merely saying as, like, an end-level consumer. You know, like, you're, if you're mad at me for that, you're kind of knocking on the wrong door. You know, I have, like... It might seem like I'm a big deal, but I really got, like, no power in this world. Even, like, within my own household. <laughs> Chat makes fun of me. I'm, like, I'm just kind of, like, uh, I'm just the court jester, right? So, you know, I, I'm, I'm always open to being educated, but at the same time, when people are like, that's a troubling opinion. I'm like, it's really not, because, like, I got no influence in that regard. I've got influence in the area of roguelites and, you know... Twitch, maybe, but like in general, not really. But uh, I think in a perfect world, there could be a, a very nice self checkout situation. We don't want that trinket, by the way, where they just always, you know, are user friendly. But I, I think right now that they, they've been designed in such a like backwards way that it, it's very annoying to me. Again, like, what do I always, what, what's my point? My point always comes down to the fact that, like, why is the self-checkout designed to prevent theft when, oh, I mean, this is what you want. Let's just be honest. When the people who are shoplifting probably would never come to the self-checkout to begin with. They would just put a bunch of stuff under their coat and then, like, walk out the front door and be like, you know... And, uh, like, moreover, like, I'm not saying you should try, you should never try to prevent theft. But, like, you know, the grocery store I, I shop in, I'm not saying there's not breakage. You know, I'm not saying there's not a, a lot of, you know, I'm not saying loss prevention makes no sense for them. But this is, like, a major multi, well, not multinational, but a major national Canadian grocery store chain. And I've been there, like, a lot. I've been there for a long time. And never in my life have I ever seen the security guard do anything. That's not to say, like, I think they're not doing their job. It's more like, if I'm the grocery store, I think I understand that I would rather not have my, you know, employee try to tackle a thief who's stealing, you know, a, a sausage link and maybe cause, like, serious health problems or risks to them, you know? And I'm like, the, the people who are going to shoplift... In my opinion, at least, and immediately I don't have data to back this up, it's just a hunch, but I don't think most shoplifters are like, and then I'm gonna go to the self-checkout and get this. I'm not gonna scan some things, but I'm gonna put them in the bag. There's no way they could stop me. Unexpected item in bagging area, please wait for attendant. Unexpected item in bagging area, please wait for... No! My master plan! You know, it's not what's gonna happen. They're gonna put in their bananas, that are organic bananas, as normal bananas to save a few cents. That's what's gonna happen. And then the attendant in those situations comes over and just goes a beep, 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 and lets you through anyway. Like they're not even doing a scan to see if it's gonna, if, if you're, it's like, you know, when you leave Costco, they look at your receipt, they look at your cart. At the self checkouts, they don't even do that. Like they've gotten so conditioned to like red light equals I go over here and, you know, put in my code, As, which by the way is probably the way they, they should be because. Again, what do they really care? Not to be rude, but if you're, uh, you know, scanning some things in slightly wrong, you know? I mean, I get that they, like, it's their job, but I also am like, you know... If they really did do an audit and scan everything in your bag and then make sure that it's scanned properly, like, they might as well at that point just be a cashier instead of having a self-checkout situation. So if you're gonna try a self-checkout situation in the interest of speeding things up, then you're gonna wanna, you know, have them actually be sped up, which means you can't actually do a security check to begin with. I, I got a lot of opinions about the self-checkout. I do use it, like, whenever I go to the pharmacy, I use it, and it's, like, a dream. Because I'm always, like, Kate's, like, buy Band-Aids. And then I go to the pharmacy, and I scan Band-Aids. And it's, even then, the transaction is kind of annoying, but now it's more of, like, a... Like, a very... It's not a boomer take. It's actually, like, a millennial take, believe it or not. But, like, to buy Band-Aids from the, uh, the self-checkout is, like, you know, hello. 
and then you hit a button, and then it's like, do you have any coupons? And you're like, nah, no coupons. And then it's like, please scan your rewards card. And you're like, skip, I don't have one of those. And then it's like, you know, I mean, you get the idea. Just an, an endless uh, barrage or deluge of, of buttons you just hit no to before you actually get the ability to to buy the thing you want to buy. But that's kind of just, that's just kind of the way it is to begin with. So I'm not trying to, you know, you know, a fly on the current really can't make it change. You know what I mean? Know what I mean, Vern? It's Vern, right? Not you, but I mean... Ernest, friend? I believe so. Anyway. Moving on here. We got a great, uh, we got a great thing going on this run. I just don't like when machines are designed in a way that makes them... Less helpful for people, because the machine in the first... It's the Coca-Cola freestyle thing all over again. Okay, we, we don't need to go down this road. I'm trying to think of some other examples, but... I mean, honestly, I think... And I, I don't work in software, you know? I I took some classes in it, but really, at, at some point, I just have kind of like a... Uh, I have hunches about what it's like to work on big projects in software. But, like... You know, you might ask yourself, and and admittedly, this is something that I'll ask to check because I'm sure we got a lot of software engineers, project managers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, no, thank you. Well, maybe no, thank you. Give me one moment here. And it's an interesting question, but like, I I saw people talking. That's not Algis. I'm gonna send it just a little bit. I saw people talking because there were like recent Twitch features added. Um, to this site in chat that a lot of people didn't like and uh, it, It's very easy to just fall into this fallacy on the internet of like when you see something that you agree with you Automatically believe it's true without actually vetting it, but I will admit this seemed very true to me Someone was like I work in software and the reason you end up seeing all these features that nobody asked for is because You know there is like some maintenance involved in software like you gotta you know, keep things up to date and, you know, patched, obviously. But then also secondarily, like, in order to justify your job, sometimes you gotta be pushing new features. Otherwise, the company might be like, well, you already built this thing for us. Like, what do we need you for now? And you're like, well, because I'm gonna add this thing that's gonna, you know, change our, you know, we're gonna be able to hit more KPIs as a result of that. And, you know, you get the idea. I'm gonna use this immediately just to be a little greedy, I suppose. Um... It's kind of how I feel about about software in general, where sometimes sometimes I'm like, it just works, you know. Don't don't mess with it so much. You got a good thing going on there. You don't need to you don't need to get weird with it. Warzone is kind of cheesing me off, and again, I'm not I'm not the angry gamer, you know. I tend to be a, a fairly um, level-headed gamer, in my opinion, at least. So I I have like a a decent amount of. Tolerance when like something goes wrong in a game and recognizance that the people on the other side of the You know developer consumer relationship are human beings and not you know merely automatons that exist to create things for my amusement However, like when warzone has like 70 million players or whatever and then oh we haven't had this in a long time And then they push uh, an update that adds new content, but also breaks all the textures on the guns so they look like Eldritch Nightmares. I'm like, how does that happen? And then, like, without being rude, how does it stay in the game for, like, longer than a week? Because it really, like, it, the problem with that stuff started happening, like, the day that Season 5 came out. I didn't even see you there, brother. Um, and it's still in there. Like, like, how does that happen? Don't understand. How does that happen, Kate? They don't, I don't, I can't believe that, though. I don't believe that they don't know how to fix it. But I mean, there's got to be some explanation of that sort, I suppose, because otherwise, why wouldn't they fix it, right? I don't know, maybe, maybe there's like, you know, in Fight Club, they have the scene where Ed Norton talks about, it's either Fight Club or American Beauty, I always get this scene confused, where they talk about how, like, you know, the guy works at a car company, and they found a defect in the car, but they did a risk analysis and realized that, like, if they did a recall, it would cost the company this much money. And if they didn't do a recall, like, only this many people would die, so they didn't do the recall. I wonder if it's like that. And, you know, the Warzone devs, or, you know, probably the 
project managers, I guess, instead, the people making the, the big decisions, are like, people are going to real. they would rather have the texture bug than have another 30 gigabyte update. Because they are getting blown up on social media for the 30 gigabyte updates. <laughs> it's a great looking game, I don't know. I, I try to stay out of that discussion because we have fiber and I have like, you know, five terabytes of storage or whatever. So whenever I get a 30 gigabyte update, I'm always like, oh, no, I got to go drink a cup of coffee for four minutes. But that's obviously not the same. It is not the same as it is for everybody worldwide. All right. Please use the pause button more. I mean, this is like it's the gimmiest gimme win of all time. If we just use the pause button, which is exactly what I want. But that is one of those things. Like, like Apollo and I, we've been talking about it. And we have a similar opinion that we both recognize, by the way, is rooted in ignorance. Without a doubt. It's like the fact that we are not working in the industry is what allows us the privilege of having this incredibly asinine take. But, like, I'm being semi-sincere when I say, like, you publish a game, it works. Stop updating it. <laughs> Stop drilling. You hit oil. You're you're good. Now, if you can update it without it reliably breaking, more power to you. But there's so many times, and I, look, I don't know. I guess I I consider it kind of a fallacy that updates make games better. There are situations where definitely, I mean, like Gungeon is such a good example. Gungeon started, and it was maybe like an eight out of ten game. Uh, by the time Gungeon was done with all its updates, I don't feel any reservations about saying that it's a 10. I don't even want to play Bumbo, honestly. I think I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna let it go, because I... I don't want to play the... I don't want to lose red hearts to make Bumbo pog off. That's what I'm trying to say. Which I think is more of a reasonable take than, like, I don't want to use Bumbo. Get me out of here. But there's also been examples of games where I'm like, I don't know, like Warzone for me, obviously, you know, I'm not a stockholder in ATVI, dollar sign ATVI. Maybe I'll become one of those cool guys who has $200 invested in the stock market and all of his tweets are like, TSLA enthusiast. Hoddle, we're going straight to the moon. Anyway. Regardless. What was I talking about before I started looking down on people? Um, I, I, for Warzone specifically, I'm like, dude, if you never released another season of content in that game, I would, I, don't get me wrong, I get a little hype for the new seasons, but if you never released another new season of content, I would be snug as a bug in a rug. I would be, I would be happy. What I was not happy with is, you know, when you play Team Unity once a week, which admittedly does not make us the average consumer, but, you know, my once a week Unity that I very much look forward to had a damper placed on it because of the fact that anytime you picked up your loadout, there was like a 90% chance that one or both of your guns looked like, uh, you know, some kind of weird shape-shifting creature out of control that made it quite literally impossible to see down the sight. I'm not, I don't mean like it was compromised. I mean like there were big textures in front of the ADS, so you actually like can't see. Anyway. I understand, don't get me wrong. Like this is not a situation where I need you to play devil's advocate. You know, if you're trying to build a platform for, for a, a game that's gonna exist for a long time, you're gonna need to push updates. When there's little stuff, like in, in Season 4, they broke uh, pre-game lobbies for a bit, so nobody could take damage in pre-game lobbies. I think everybody was kind of like, haha, that's like, I love the pre-game lobby and this sort of sucks, but it's, you know, not unplayable. But when they ship bugs, like, uh, your guns don't look right anymore. Like, they, I don't mean like they got the wrong camo. I honestly don't even think we need Brimstone. I'll pass it up. And the best part is when you pass up Brimstone, you're building up goodwill so you could pick it up like a hundred times. And whenever people are like, I'm sick of Brimstone, you can just be like, remember that time I passed it up? But when you... And again, like it's... Uh, ew, that was not good damage, but... I feel bad because like essentially, what does my wisdom come down to here? Uh, don't ship bugs, forehead. Like nobody intentionally does it. But I am like, come on. 
Like, I, I kind of hate the reasoning that, like, oh, a billion dollar company, they can't fix their game. The reason I hate it is because I think it's often used unfairly. Like, people will make a mistake in the game, blame the game's sound, and then be like, Oh, billion dollar game, can't get sound working right. But, like, when you can't even, like, use your gun, that's kind of one of those where you're like, come on, man. <laughs> come on. Uh, I don't know who runs Activision Blizzard anymore, but, like, come on, new Bobby Kotick. I'm trying to be on your side here. I'm trying to be Mr. Pro Corporate, and uh, you're making it mighty tough. Like, most bugs in, in games like that, I'll be honest, when people complain about it, I'm like, yeah, it's not ideal, but it's not that big of a deal. This one is, like, game-breaking, and you just kind of have to ask yourself, you're like, A, how did this happen? And then B, like, how does it keep going for, like, a week? Like, I think if you went to, I mean, this is way too, like, gamer ragey, but let's go with it anyway. I feel like if you went to your job and did it, like, really, really badly for a week. I mean, if I did my job really badly for a week, you wouldn't notice, because that's par for the course. I was thinking about what joke to go with there. But, like, no, legitimately, if I just, like, half efforted it, and put out, like, seven Stinker Isaac episodes that were all losses and, like, clearly was not doing anything right. Um, well, that's, again, maybe a little hyperbolic, but... <laughs> um, but I think, like, you know, you in the comments would be like, Hey, uh, what are you doing? Get it together. Like, this game-breaking bug existing in one of the biggest games on the planet for a week is like, Really? It's like shipping Avengers Endgame to the theaters, but you accidentally put, like, the ending to Marley and me instead of, like, the climactic battle, you know? You're like, that's... Look, it's an understandable mistake, apparently. But also, like, you know, it's been six days. Actually, it's been, like, eight days now. <laughs> can we get... Can we get portals? Can we get portals instead of Marley and me? Anyway. I hate being the angry gamer guy, but it's, it is really one of those situations where I'm like, I just don't get it. It's not that big of a deal. Again, I only play the game once a week. It's the one room I wish I had uh, Brimstone for. Yeah, you know what? I mean, like, we don't need to stand in there the whole time. Um... I only felt comfortable losing HP there because I know that every other room that exists we should like legitimately lose zero or one if we're being lazy but anyway so that's what I got going on apparently caring a little bit too much about the Warzone update but like it's like your car not being able to drive like randomly I mean, it's not as unsafe, admittedly, but, like, imagine if your car, like, randomly lost power steering now and then. You'd be like, hey, can you fix this? And they're like, you know, well, we're thinking about it. And, like, every metaphor I use, every comparison makes it sound, like, way more serious than it actually is. You know, it's, at the end of the day, it is literally just, like, you know, a problem in a video game. Even if it's game-breaking, you know, it is just... It's just real video game hours, but I'm just I'm more like baffled from a software perspective that it could happen, you know? Anyway, we're moving on here. I actually didn't realize this was not a complete dead end. So I think we're I mean this is a win, obviously. It's one of the most overpowered combinations you could ever have. I mean I gotta tell you, if we're talking about like power rankings in this game. Sack Dagger, as an item, has probably risen more in the past, like, two years than any other item in this game. Well, that's... There's probably some that started insanely low and now are at least, like, at a functional level uh, in my power rankings. But this is one of the ones that, like... St okay, that was bad. Started high, but is ended up at, like, the elite tier, without a doubt. 
I will say there's a there's a hockey game today. There's a Canucks v Blues game today. A series that realistically, I'm trying to think by the time of this recording, it might not be guaranteed to be over, but it would have had to go to seven games for sure to, for that to be the case. Um, but it's said, and this is a very you know West Coast frustration. I'm actually stoked for East Coast and Central Canucks fans. They get to watch a game that doesn't force them to stay up until, like, you know, 1 a.m. their time. And watch this be ironic, and we'll go to, like, septuple overtime. But um, it's at 3.30 Pacific on a Friday, dude. And I'm like, don't get me wrong. You know, we mix it up. I, I get enough 7.30 games, and it's way better than, like, whenever the Canucks do their road trip in the east and they end up playing buffalo at like 10 a.m pacific time like you really had to give them not only an east coast game but then also like an east coast afternoon game so it's west coast morning anyway it's as if the theme of the episode is minor belly aching about things that don't actually matter that much but i'm like i gotta put the game on monitor two i can't be a monitor one guy today Regardless, that was a great episode. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!